Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you guys all the exciting new cards coming out of Floats on Hypernova. Now, I've probably done a video on these cards individually, but since this set's literally around the corner, I kind of just want to hype everyone up and just remind everyone in a quick video of all the crazy shit that's coming out in this set. Uh, this set is bonkers. It is ridiculously great. And starting off strong, the Photon cards are insane. They put Photon back on the map. Now, I don't think Photon is Tier 1 broken, but as a strong rogue deck, my god, all this support's crazy. Like, they made this deck insanely good with all the generic support they gave it. Like, every card in this deck is a banger. And they already had some really solid support in previous sets. So the fact that they had this whole set dedicated to them is kind of insane. And I can't wait to explore some of these cards. Uh, next thing we have is the Abyss after support. Talk about some good stuff, man. The new Link 2 is insanely good. Not to mention all the other Abyss after monsters we get. I made a whole uh, deck profile slash review of all the new cards. So check that out in any other video. But uh, basically, these cards are really, really good. I, I don't think they put Abyss after on the map again. Because you're still locked into Abyss actors. But it's really solid support. Great cards. The new insect shit, though, on the other hand, can definitely put bugs on the map. Maybe not this set, but definitely when that new uh, Bee Trooper fusion comes out. All these cards are just generic insect good stuff. And honestly, they're kind of insane. Like, as, like, really cool, doom like, modern-day insect cards, they're really solid. And the artwork for these cards are also fantastic. I mean, I really love the new fusion mechanic they're doing. The way how they the equip spells... And they equip and they fuse using like the bugs as armor is really, really cool. It brings me back to the anime. Really cool archetypes getting revealed. Uh, the new Evil Eye support. Holy shit. Uh, the new Evil Eye cards got revealed with generator cards. And the Evil Eye cards are insanely good. They're not meta breaking, but holy crap, they do move Evil Eye up a couple of ranks. I honestly forgot. I think they forgot about Evil Eye. They've been focusing so much on Infinite Track and the Rika cards that came out in the same set. I just assumed Evil Eye wasn't going to get anything, but here we are getting proved wrong. Actually, wait, Rika didn't come out in this set. What set came out with Evil Eyes? It was Evil Eyes. It was the... God, I remember this set so well. I'm, 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 I, it just, we'll just say it's good stuff. Really interesting support. Move on to the Sword Soul card. Okay, we got the new Sword Soul card. And is isn't crazy crazy, but it is a new main deck boss monster. It is searchable. It is like a really cool interruption. It's a big ass monster that does things. It's a free summon, helps push for game. Sword Soul didn't have an issue pushing for game, but now they really push for game with this guy. Overall, it's just a really, really solid monster. I never thought they'd get a main deck boss monster. I always thought it'd be another synchro. But this guy isn't bad. He's a really solid card in general. I definitely see him being played as a one of or a two of. Speaking of one ofs and two ofs, uh, here's a new Link 5 for Tri Brigade. I don't know how the hell we're summoning this card. To me, this card gets better when the, when the last Tri Brigade support comes out. I think the next set after this, when we get that new spell card, which is actually kind of great. But uh, this card requires three different Tri Brigade spells in the grave or traps in the graveyard in order to be summoned. But this card is kind of like a Zeus in a way. It's a really interesting card. Most of the time, you're just going to pitch it into the graveyard. But still, it's so good. Uh, Ice Jades. Hey, they have a boss. They have a win condition now. This Synchro is actually kind of nutty for the archetype. Not to mention, if you don't know anything about Ice Jades, they already have a Floodgate that was given to us all the way back in Dimension Force. So, pairing this Synchro plus a Floodgate... That's actually kind of sick. Is it broken? I don't think so. It definitely puts it in rogue contention, but hey, it's not bad at all. Really interesting. Golden Pride. We made a whole video on this like two days ago. We still don't know what any of these cards do, but they're so cool looking. It's like a movie slash it's uh, the seven part of JoJo's, which is the everyone's favorite one. The race of races. Everyone's got to do the race against Funny Valentine and all that, but... uh. Basically, it's just a race. It's a really cool archetype. We have no nothing about this deck. We just know there's pirates, intergalactic space race, and who knows who'll win. 
And now we got the Gishkis, which, hey, these cards are actually meta-relevant. Gishki has put Ritual back on the map since Drytron fell off, which is great. Now, it is being played as a shell and splite, but hey, I'll take what we can get. This card is phenomenal. I love the idea that using the Ritual spell, you can Ritual Summon using your opponent's monsters. Talk about what a cool effect. A non-once return to start tributing your opponent's crap to summon out Gishkis? That's a really cool effect. I want to see this deck pop off. This card's really, really solid. I want to see some more uh, ideas on how people tinker in the TCG. Uh, this new Chaos archetype is busted. Let's just be real here. Uh, maybe not as a pure deck, but all the cards are just generic light and dark support. And the Synchro is kind of cool. It's really strong. Uh, I think this deck has a lot of potential, especially when more waves come out. And we have those other generic Synchros that are coming out. But uh, right now, I, know that I forgot the name of this archetype already, but this archetype seems really cool. Like Especially this guy on a field who like banishes cards. It's like... Really, really cool, cool deck. I just want to see someone play with it. Um, this is definitely people on a low radar, but still. Generator, another card. Uh, talk about putting Generator back on the map. How do you make Generator less bricky? Let's give them a level 9, especially someone's another level 9 from hand. Meaning, this plus any other level 9 is a rank 9. That's solid as all hell. Not to mention, the XYZ is actually good disruption against tier elements. And we actually have some potential here as a really cool rogue deck. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still generator. It's still slow. But, hey, who knows? Now, this thing... Now, talk about putting rituals on a map. This thing's stupid. Uh, Crazy Domatic over here. This guy, he's a boss monster and ball boss monsters. I mean, if this guy resolves, you're kind of winning the game. Uh, this guy is cracked. 4,000 attack. Does all the shit he does with banishing the extra deck, he's kind of insane. And the fact he's in Dalmatica, which is heavily searchable, card's stupid, honestly. Uh, another card, the new Brandage stuff. There's a whole bunch of new brand cards, but this is the one everyone's talking about. This card's pretty crazy with the, new, with the Ecclesia stuff. And I want to see people tinker around with it. It's a really cool card. And I want to see someone break it. It, it. It's really cool. I'll probably be tinkering around with it in my brand new tier deck, which I'm still playing. It's a really awesome card and cool effects. I just want to see it pop off. The new Labyrinth card. We got to be excited about this. Everyone's favorite waifu deck that came out last year for Resident Evil. It's here, and it's solid. This trap's amazing for the archetype, and it does a lot for it, but it doesn't really make it like tier one. But it definitely keeps it in the in the contention as a very powerful rogue deck. Probably the strongest trap deck we have, honestly. Maybe this and Dynamorphia, but I would say Dynamorphia not until that new trap card comes out. Uh, now let's talk about the crack cards. This stu this thing's stupid, and if it's on a secret rare, I will be heavily surprised. This Bistil, this Bistid right here, is the stupidest fucking thing I ever read. Have you read this thing? Not only is it a DD Crow free summon on the field, 2500 beat stick. But in like quick effect pops cards too. It, this thing's cracked. This thing is so stupid. It's ridiculous. Like when I used to read this effect early this, last year, it was stupid before. Another archetype that's crazy. Cash Tira. Holy crap. This deck's gonna be insane. It's gonna be so expensive too with all the rarities this got revealed. But uh, this deck's going to be crazy, and I know everyone's predicting it to be, like, the third best deck behind, like, Flu and, like, Tear and Split. I guess it's the fourth best deck, honestly. But I still think people haven't really seen the potential of this deck. Someone's going to break it in TCG. And then finally, one of the most broken cards ever read. What the... Your opponent activates a monster effect. Search any spell in the game. What? What do you mean, search any spell in the game? This card is bananas. This card is going to be, better be a secret. Imagine this thing was a common. Holy shit. But no, it's probably a secret rare. It's probably dummy, expensive. But you got to play this card. This card searches any spell in the game. Your opponent activates a monster. If your opponent looks at you wrong, you win the game with this card. That's insane. <laughs>